Hey guys and welcome to this um ah I think I'm missing oh Hey guys and welcome to this unfiltered blue brew um blocks. Hey guys and welcome to this unfiltered brew block. Oh. Good. What's going on guys and welcome to the unfiltered brew vlog. Today we're doing a brewery tour but I gotta warn you when I recorded this the first time the audio on the camera came out horrible so I re-recorded the audio with my beautiful narrating voice. So let's jump into it. Okay, so as you can see there, for this system, it's an all grain system. And uh, what that means is that I, there's three containers for the brewing process. Uh, the reason that we have three is because this allows us to separate the variables throughout the brewing process. So if I wanted to find uh, maybe some off flavors or something that went wrong, uh, as long as I record it in a book, I can go back and, and check all this stuff out. So there's two uh, burners, if you notice, but the middle one does not have a burner. And that's because the middle one is the one that holds the grain. And uh, it is used to um, pull the starches out of the grain. So you're, you're essentially dribbling hot water over it. And um, we don't want to expose that to an open flame because it would burn your grain that way. There's... Um, a coiled tube that sits inside this one and I use this uh, pot as a thermal regulator so I will pump the water in and it will go around the coils absorb the heat from the burner and um, th that would be water filled up in that container um, it would capture the heat from that water and then it would be pumped along into this container where it would uh, be distributed and dribbled onto the uh, grain and there's a false bottom inside this pot so that we don't lose any of the grain it, it will separate the grain from the water and as the water loses the temperature as it's being um, sent to the grain we'll push it right back through the pumps and through the valve system and we'll direct it to go back into that tube through the top here and once it goes back in the tube it will recollect the heat from the water that is uh, thermal regulating it and, and holding that temperature and send it right back over to the grain so once you steep your grains for whatever the time it takes uh, you will essentially release all the starch out of them you have a starch conversion and then you would move on to the next container which would, uh, so you, all, your, all your grain would be sitting in this pot and you would pull all the water out. Again, you pull it through that pump and bring it back through the manifold, uh, which will come out through here and go in through this, this valve system, come back up and then we'll send it over to the boil pot. And this pot is just used to uh, achieve the boiling points. And you can see that there was rings inside that pot. So what I do is I keep uh, filtered water here on the sides. So here, so here's the rings. You can see them. And uh, so that is because of the minerals inside the tap water. Uh, I guess I have hard water from the tap here. So what I do now is I just keep a 50-gallon barrel of filtered water. So that way when I'm pushing it through um, the containers and... Um, boiling it throughout the process, I don't get any more buildup or off flavors. So here you can see is just the uh, type of burner that I use. It's a uh, larger burner that's made for um, brewing bigger batches. So this batch can brew up to 30 gallons, uh, 35 gallons. And I have everything sitting here on a stainless steel equipment stand. It's a food grade one. And since, um, so I'm showing the vent right there because everything is propane. So uh, I have a high grade vent um, that, that moves about 900 cubic feet of air every minute. So I uh, don't expose myself to any of the fumes or the heat or even the humidity from the brewing process. 
So this is showing the way that I move the fluids around. It's a uh, connection that has a uh, rubber gasket and it sits in between the two metal pipes. And then you can see in my hand here, unfortunately I'm, I only have one hand so I wasn't able to show up, but there's a, a little gasket that goes over the top of that and connects it and uh, pushes it through this, this manifold here that I built. And uh, it's traditionally, you would have two pumps in this all grain setup. Uh, however, I haven't found the need for the second pump, so I am able just to accomplish what I have through this uh, one pump here in, in the manifold. I have a, a drain at the bottom here, um, so the lowest point is where all the water will go to. So at the end of the day, when you're done brewing and you want to get all the the water out that would be sitting in the pipe still. There's a drain that connects to a hose and I can just run that out right to the garage. And over here there's a, a bleeder valve so the pump won't work unless it, all the air is removed and this allows the air to be bled out through the sides. And since I converted to a all grain system that requires that I use a lot more grain um, so I had to upgrade my my scale here. So I have a, uh, a commercial grade scale that I just put a five gallon bucket on top of and I can weigh my grain out. Depending on the type of brew, you can brew up to maybe a hundred, hundred pounds of grain. Uh, you might use a hundred pounds of grain, uh, but I'd say average is about 20 to 30 pounds. And I buy fresh grain and I just mulch it up in one of these uh, grain mills which is uh, just a stainless steel hopper that uh, mulches up the grain. I'll show here on the inside here just in a second. I uh, don't use the handle anymore. Instead, I just connect it to a power drill and use the lowest setting, uh, which moves it a lot faster. And you can see here there's just two, two uh, spinners that will, that will crunch the casing of the grain as it goes through. And this way really ensures that you don't have any... Um, freshness problems because you're you're crunching your grain up right before the brewing process okay so again I have this vent here which is still needs to be finished um, but what I plan to do is run electrical through the back here and that will connect to the pump and then all that is going to be controlled by a uh, switch system that I'm going to put over here and on the other side of this uh, wall there's the air conditioning for the wine room and I'm planning on, uh, well, I have a, a vent back there to push out all the hot air. So the cold air goes and sucked into the bottom here and gets pushed out through the top. And so all that will be connected through a manifold system. And here I'm just showing the, uh, the smoke fan that I use. It's uh, 900 cubic feet a minute. And I'm still going to, I'm going to wire it up permanently. But I, in the meantime, I just have it on, run to a plug. Um, it, so that will be done probably within the next month or so. Here is the uh, cleaning supplies that I use. So I have uh, distilled water so that I can um, grow my yeast. And, uh, and I also take uh, microbial samples throughout the brewing process. So I, I know that at the end, my yeast is what comes out and not, I'm not growing anything else in the fermenting process. So uh, the, the distilled water is used for that. Uh, this is the CO2 manifold. It's a, a a manifold that will connect to the kegging system and then the back here is where I keep my fermenters uh, currently I have um, cleanser in there so I keep sanitizer so I can soak my my tubing and all my tools throughout the process and uh, this K uh, sorry that that keg system the fermenting system just has a uh, a bung on the top that you use with an airlock so that you don't build up too much pressure when you're fermenting. Over here is just where I keep my uh, cleaning supply. Um, here I'm showing it. It's, there's just a airlock that goes on top, which uh, lets out the gas buildup um, when you're fermenting because there, there's a lot of CO2 buildup. And uh, this is a grain bin. For, uh, it's, it's essentially a trash can, but you just you just put your spent grain in there. Um, because you, like I said, you have up to a hundred pounds of grain when you're using an all grain process. And, uh, over here is where I test for the specific gravity. So you have just a, uh, 
long cylinder that you will collect your samples from, and then you'll essentially float a uh, meter in there, which will tell you your gravity, and, and it can predict your um, al your predicted alcohol for the amount of beer that you're making. And then the little graduated cylinder is what I use for uh, growing yeast. Um, I, up here on the wall is just where I keep the the various tools throughout the process. So I have a, a stirrer on the far left that I use to mix up the grain and ensure that the water um, gets to all the process, uh, touches all the surface area of the grain. Uh, I keep all my tubes here um, after they've been sanitized. I am in the process of converting over to all the same types of tubes because you see they're all different ones. So I'm going to be changing that. Uh, this is the most important brewing part of the process, which is taking notes about everything that you're doing. So all throughout my brew day, I take uh, notes about temperatures, brew times, how long the hops um, were, were brewed, and uh, the testing afterwards. So I'll do uh, like microbial testing. I, I do cultures, and um, I'll also do the uh, gravity testing. Um, so I'll, I'll talk more about the culture testings in another video, but... Um, yeah, it is an important part of the process. So up there, I just keep the uh, CO2 cartridges for the mini kegs, which is shown right there, and uh, the corks for the wine bottles, as well as the lids. I keep a capper up there. And um, my nitrogen, um, which is just for like uh, when you brew uh, iced coffee and you want to put it under pressure so you can tap it, um, which I can uh, go over that how I do that as well. This is my preferred capper. Um, it it's, uh, works a lot better than that black one. The black one tends to break the bottles. And uh, here is just showing the, the uh, winery, which a wine room, which I've set up so that it's temperature controlled. With the exception of the wall where that door is, all the other walls are eight inches thick and double insulated. And uh, so it's really an ideal room to uh, maintain temperature throughout the fermenting process so i keep i store my grain in here um, and then i will normally put my fermenters right there and they'll sit uh, covered up not exposed to any sunlight um, until they're done fermenting and here is where i keep my kegs uh, i only have one right now just one five gallon keg and then i also keep my um, samples in here um, I have some yeast right over here and um, some yeast starter kits, which is just essentially wort. It's just uh, sh sucrose um, water so that the yeast can have something to uh, eat and grow. And uh, over here, I just keep a batch of uh, hops. Uh, yeah, hops and... Uh, various other things like I have cinnamon sticks for when I want to get crazy and try different brew systems. This is uh, sugar because uh, I'm going to try doing a uh, what do you call it? I'm going to try doing a, a brew process that uses uh, candied sugar essentially. So um, that's that's how I keep my refrigerator. And then I have some music, of course, because you need music during the brew process. So with the all grain system, it takes uh, sometimes a whole eight hours to brew because you're you're trying to heat up, you know, up to thirty gallons of water. So it, it takes quite a while to heat everything. All right, guys, that's about it for the brewery tour. Uh, this is how I operate with the all grain system, and really, I uh, prefer this way because it allows me to. Uh, analyze different variables throughout the brewing process uh, which allows me to control these different things or possibly as you saw I'll go back in my notebook and hopefully identify where uh, it might have messed up during the brewing process but it doesn't have to be that complicated really if you want to get started brewing uh, and, and I, I definitely recommend that you you try to get out there and do it if it's something you're interested in uh, you can do it with something as simple as just one pot. Uh, really, you don't need anything special. You can just grab a pot from underneath your counter. And uh, the tools that you have are just enough for you to start with and, and start having fun with the brewing process. 
and really just seeing how how things move and and how it comes together and where it goes and really you can start from there and start building your flavors as you start to gain experience um, and, and maybe move to something like this if you find it really interesting so I was just using this as a uh, hopefully just using this as a way to uh, to show you the uh, the more advanced brewing methods that are out there very soon I'll make a video about the extract process uh, but in the meantime if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like and subscribe to this channel Thank you.